Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. I have a book to review for you today and I must admit it was wonderful. You know how sometimes books seem to fall into your hands and you read them just at the right time where they make the most meaning for you? Well, this one was it for me. It was The Shepherd's Life, A Tale of the Lake District by James Rebanks. And uh, James is and was a shepherd. This was his first book written in 2015. And judging by all the testimonials on the back and on the inside cover, it must have been a hit. And no wonder, no wonder. He actually lays out the life of a shepherd over the four seasons. And we learn about the story uh, of his life. And how difficult it was for him to come to terms with the life of a shepherd. For him, he always knew, even as a kid, that he wanted to do what his father did and what his grandfather did and his great-grandfather did. And in fact, we find out that in his life, he's got 600 years worth of family behind him who have been doing exactly the same job, being part of the land and um, shepherding sheep all this time he even said that there's he could have an ancestor of his just stand beside him and look at what he was doing and see that they were doing exactly the same thing and this is really a it's a very humbling read for me because it made me think that I have I haven't taken into account I guess the the lives of the people who are working on land um, and it made me appreciate the the work that they do i mean i have to think back to the times every single year where i go to the bendigo wool and sheep show and i go and sit in those um in the 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 sheep hall where they're judging sheep and you see all the sheep farmers and they're looking through the 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 the, the wool of the the sheep and they're judging them and they're prodding open their teeth and i'm there sitting in the audience going what the hell are they doing what are they testing? You know, they're, they're looking at their feet, they're looking into their ears, and you go, what are they doing? And coming from the point of view of a city person to look at what what these farmers are doing was quite nonsensical until, until I read this and saw how the importance they place on their flocks and how important um, the different times of year are to them uh, for the lambing, for the ewes, um, for the tups. And you just it just goes to show that there's an, a life evolution there that I'm simply not part of or didn't wasn't aware of. And reading this was really a humbling experience. What was also humbling about it was the fact that James knew right from the start that this was a job he wanted to do. But he was also kind of very curious as when he was a young person why the teachers and others didn't hold to account as well the life of these people on the land who had been there for so many years for hundreds of years doing the same job wasn't their job as important as say someone else who was working in the city or had some other jobs and so what i loved about this book was the yellow bits for me was the points where it really hit home for me. Like there was some important message that I gleaned from it that uh, hit with my life and my thinking around how we've disconnected from the land and I guess um, how also it lays around the themes of belonging and where we belong. And maybe the fact that what we're doing now to our planet and I guess the, the new modern practices of farming is really destroying our planet and destroying the livelihoods of people who have been doing things like this for hundreds of years. And so these yellow bits for me were real standout moments. The orange bits were just, I guess, examples. But let me show you some of the yellow bits that I really found uh, intriguing and um, kind of changing my mindset. He writes here that um, landscapes like ours were created by and survived through the efforts of nobodies. They're really not nobodies. We made them into nobodies. 
That's why I was so shocked to be given a dead rich white man version of its history at school. This is a landscape of modest, hardworking people. The real history of our landscape should be the history of nobodies. He also goes on to say that some people's lives are entirely of their own creation. Mine isn't. That was really sobering to think that you come, you get born into a family that does one thing all the time and coming at it from a point of view as someone who's not been in there, I would think, man, but wouldn't you want to break out from that? Wouldn't you want to get out and explore the world? Wouldn't you want to do some really great things? But why am I discounting then the life of someone who really wants to do that? They've actually been brought up in this whole environment. They've been doing the great work that their ancestors have done. Why wouldn't you be proud of, of, of doing that? So this book actually made me question my own thinking. Uh, he also loved his grandfather. He held his grandfather in, um, in huge esteem. And he said that my grandfather and father could go on just about anywhere in northern England and they'd usually know who farmed the land and often who had been there previously and who farmed next door. The whole landscape here is a complex web of relationships between farms, flocks and families. My old man can hardly spell common words but has an encyclopedic knowledge of the landscape. I think it makes a mockery of conventional ideas about who is and who isn't intelligent. Some of the smartest people I've ever known are semi, semi-literate. So can you see how he's actually coming up with very alternative ways of looking at and going, I guess, laying a, a different alternative view of what we thought intelligence um, to be? He also goes, I look back and I realise I was wrong about all of this. I suppose what's growing up is realising how little you know and how many things you have been wrong about. So he talks about how he's also learning. But through this book, it made me question about my own biases uh, around certain jobs and uh, what I, another thing I loved about this book is he started to question it growing up uh, that he had books around him so he started to read and I tagged this as a, as a yellow um, marker because the yellow markers were the ones that really stood out for me was that he was surrounded by books from Hemingway, Camus, Selinger, A.J.B. Taylor and Orwell and he says that turns out my grandfather had impeccable taste in books. I mean, man, if you're reading those books... The whole world opens up and he says, and I lucked out because they ended up in front of my hungry eyes and just at the moment I needed them. Every night I would lie awake on my bed, pleased to have the space away from other people, reading like a maniac. And when I left school, I didn't read much, but very soon I became a devourer of books. And if you read books like that, no wonder your world opens up. You start to question and you start to appreciate the world for what it is. So, look, this entire book, I simply loved it. I loved it because it made me realise the hard work that shepherds do and the important work that they do, but also the challenges that they come across in everyday modern life um, with regards to their farming practices. There were some bits in this book that really made me feel squeamish, but, you know, in hindsight, when I think about why it's because I've c completely disconnected from it I don't know and I don't see how food is made or how food gets to my table um, I open the fridge and I get my meat and I cook my meat and that's it but what goes on in the background of how how that came to be there is an entirely different matter so I love this book and I really do recommend this, you finding a copy of it somewhere online or in your secondhand bookstore or if it's still around in bookstores nowadays, find it, read it, appreciate it. It makes you really realise and question where you belong and how majority of us have probably got 
things a bit a bit all right we shouldn't discount people who are working on the land if we've been doing this job for many many years and will probably be the ones doing the same job in years to come anyway thanks for listening and thanks for watching bye for now